that we need to have the conversation of culture because we have so much to share. Uh, culture is not only inside but outside. Uh, our culture is really what, it, you know, it's really who we are. And so by us having the opportunity of sharing who we are with other people, it is so important to be able then to uh, let others know, but also to be able to share our history. Um, because it's not just us, it is all the hundreds and thousands of people that have been part of our culture before us. I believe the way that we can appreciate someone else's culture is by appreciating ours first and to be comfortable with ours and then allowing other cultures to be themselves. Um, I believe that by knowing other cultures, we become better people because then we can level the playing field because it's not just us, but it's an all-inclusive we together. I believe we take this conversation back to the community by doing events like today, by also talking to first our families and making sure that we're comfortable in having these conversations within our own families, and then taking it out into the different circles where we work and we play. You know, we've been talking about culture, and culture can be so many different things. And I'd like to speak about the financial culture, about financial wellness and the culture of financial wellness. And so what do I believe or what would I dream for the future? What would, what would it bring in our community? What would it be in our community? It would be the leveling of the financial playing field, that everyone would be inclusive, having access to credit, having access to information about what makes a good decision with dollars and with money. When I was growing up, we really didn't have those kinds of conversations at our kitchen table. In our family, we never talked about the stock market. We didn't talk about savings accounts. What we did talk about was our families. We talked about our relatives. We talked about who we are and what made us important as a family. But I wish we would have talked about money as well. So when we talk about future, that's what I hope, is that we can level the financial playing field. That's an interesting question. What kind of wisdom would I want someone in the future to know about our present? I'm hoping that it's more of that generation was looking towards something to change. That we, uh, as they look back from that future to what we are now, is that they saw a place that people were asking the right questions and more importantly, that we were listening to one another and not accepting our own truth to be the only truth. I think at this moment in 2016, um, we're living in very tumultuous times when it comes to people communicating about their beliefs and their belief system. So as it stands today, that is one of the most important reasons why we need a, a conversation about culture so that we can come to some sort of common ground and understanding to be able to move forward from these oftentimes vitriolic times. I think the key thing is listening. Being able to sit down and listen to the stories that people have to share with one another, where they come from, but also uh, the anecdotes. Not only the struggles and the trials and tribulations, but the assets, the beauty that their culture possesses. I think when you listen to those things more and more, you start to realize that there's a lot of commonality. So listening is important so that you can absorb as much as you can, but I think the key thing is having conversations that are comfortable, um, getting, gathering people, you know, in, in, in Spanish we call them platicas, right? The family sits down on Sundays, sits over la mesa, some pan dulce, and has conversation with the family. And I think that's really key is starting in very comfortable environments where we can have sometimes these charged conversations, but in a comfortable space where people feel like they can speak their mind, be listened to and respected. I think that's the key first step, followed by events like this, larger events. My hope is that we don't need moments like this where a big part of the catalyst for these conversations 
are the trials. My hope is that in the future, these are conversations to hold on to the distinctions between our cultures and communities, but also to look into the future and what we can create together. In other words, looking at the beauty of our, of our cultures and the distinctions and not the impetus being why those distinctions are maybe negative, um, but, but really looking at coming together and creating a really unified fabric. And for the youth, I think that's really important for young children at a young age to be able to feel that comfort level um, at their younger ages. Listen to one another, communicate, and be creative. I think with those three key things, we'll be able to really create 50 years from now, 100 years from now, a community that is not only diverse, but a community that is really looking to other issues. Um, and I think that those things are, are what, for those generations, for your generations, are gonna be really exciting. A uh, very good question, ma'am. The uh, being part of a minority, uh, it, it is the realization that just like you would want your have your own culture appreciated, it gives you the tremendous energy to appreciate the other cultures to be treated the same way. And the diversity is just the nature on how the Lord created us uh, with various uh, religious boundaries or 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 con country boundaries. Uh, that just we believe as is, is by design of the Lord and that and we appreciate it as a beauty and so uh, that understanding itself uh, perhaps leads to uh, let me explore the world around me just like we are in scientific world exploring the different uh, species to the various beauty of the nature all the way from galaxy down to the micro microorganisms uh, so is the by design the, the variety among us we are all individual yet uh, the essence is perhaps the same the conversation back to the community is first to get community involvement, just like I'm making the effort here today, and thanks to the Institute of Textual Culture in providing that platform in the cross-culture dialogue, uh, giving us an avenue to educate about, about our culture, our, uh, as well as learn from the others. And that's a perfect way to engage, and we believe, truly believe, that education is the key to solution of a lot of uh, issues which may have perhaps be set by differences. There, there are more common grounds than, than the differences which, which help us. Uh, there is hope to be united. I come from India, which is the largest democracy, uh, which is amazing. I, you know, I've now spent more of my half life, life, half of life here in the U.S., but uh, it's amazing to see the unity in that country uh, of so many diverse cultures, so many languages, so many faiths, but it's all under one democratic rule uh, to a billion plus population. And so is U.S. who has embraced us as immigrants way back, you know, in in having the same principles uh, and there's so much in common. And so that possibility absolutely exists and both the United States and India have that proven to the rest of the world. So, uh, well, I, I uh, am a learner. I, I'll try to share my two cents. I, you know, by definition of, of a Sikh is a disciple, which is an ever learning journey of the gurus uh, or the prophet or uh, the person who has the right wisdom. The the uh, having the right connection with the right person who embrace, you know, provides the right wisdom is, is, is the blessing what we, which I personally believe. And so here's my two cents. Uh, there's a radical idea, which not a radical, but a beautiful idea which came into the mind and how we can solve and unite people in a mathematical equation, if I can explain. How unity can be defined in mathematically. So it's by nature of a human. Uh, we all understand what one is. It's the simplest number one can embrace. And we all as individuals are one who have been sent to the planet. We all were born the same way, it doesn't matter which country, which religion, we're starting as one. Uh, the Lord created really two diversity, man and woman. And if man and woman were not designed biologically to mate and love each other, we wouldn't be simply multiplying. But that was the only two differences which were created, which were by design united. Now we as individuals, uh, our nature is that as and how we find other individuals around us, they are, uh, we, we naturally start to add. Just like here in this community, if you're about 100 people today, that's one plus one plus one plus one to equal to 100 roughly. And these are the attendees of Institute of Texan Culture. We may take it further and say, well, there are 101.5 million in San Antonio. 
uh, but it's a natural tendency to keep on adding to perhaps get to the right side of the equation, which is the infinity. One plus one plus one plus one, we keep on going and we end up to the infinity. However, we end up dividing the left side of the equation in different brackets, which I call the boundaries. And these boundaries can be based on religion, understanding, culture, faith, uh, uh, school system, democratic, republican, you name it, there are n number of ways to define that bracket and you could be in one that locked in that bracket for a moment of time when you are representing that bracket to the rest of the world. Uh, but still, we are about seven billion ones on the left side and perhaps the right side of the equation would be seven billion or maybe infinity if you were to have the universe. All I request, all it takes in the equation is to change the operator and realize the power of one. How? Plus is like this. Just simply turn it a little bit. Have a prison of unity. And now it becomes multiply. Now you look at the equation. One times 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 one. No matter how many number ones exist on the left side, on your right side you'll end up with one. That's the power of one. What has left side reveal? in a multiply uh, equation is one times infinity. That's the power of infinity, which you still end up with the same one Lord, the same one being, which is on your right side, which is one. All it took is a little change in the operator in our thinking. It's all in the mind. And you just happen to realize the most powerful, beautiful equation uh, for oneness. Well, for, I'm sorry. For me, for me, culture, uh, at one point in time, back in the 70s, there wasn't a lot of conversation about culture, maybe because it just wasn't the right time or there weren't a lot of groups that intermingled with each other. But to me, I attribute a lot of it to the Texas Folklife Festival. They brought an awareness to the community of all the cultures that are part of Texas, which you become interested in knowing what are the values each group has, what are the arts and crafts, and it becomes such an interesting topic. I find it's important for all of us to know and be aware of each other's heritage. Yeah. Also, I think when we get out of our homes, out of our new communities, you know, we grow up in a small environment, mm -hmm. and we, we just know us. And then as we become involved in school, in, yes. in the community, in the church uh, family, then we get to know other people. When I, I grew up in a small town of about 600 here in South Texas, and all I knew was white, brown, and one black. I mean, that's, that's mm -hmm. what our little community had. Mm -hmm. It was when I went to work in the hospital that I got to know this Filipino group, this other group, and, and we communicated through food. When we had potlucks, you know, and oh, that's about, just like you. Like, yes. yes. I, I tend to agree with both of you. In fact, I also grew up here in San Antonio, Texas, as well as listening to my parents talk about their own cultures, and you are correct. Uh, we only knew about, you know, Anglo-Saxons, Hispanics, Chinese, and my mother grew up in uh, Crystal City, Texas. Oh, wow. And so she was involved in the farmland there, and she tells me how she grew up where she couldn't speak Spanish at all in school prohibited. and prohibited mm -hmm. from speaking. So I feel that, yes, it is important that we should know of each other's culture because in life we want to leave a legacy mm -hmm. to others. Yeah, for me, I'm, uh, I'm happy that I'm here today because I agree with everything. I mean, I'm, uh, I like what I hear here, but I came exactly for a specific point related to me in person. So I thought maybe when I hear about this, I said, okay, this is maybe my time to come and let's uh, talk about my issue, which is I am actually uh, an Iraqi uh, refugee and uh, I am a former Muslim. I, I've been uh, converted in my country to Christianity and then I, I came here as a Christian, but the thing is I love everybody surrounding me and they are here in, in San Antonio especially, they don't see any problem. I mean, if 
they don't mind if I am here to be anything. But the thing is, actually, I'm sorry to say it this way, I have noticed from my own people a kind of, I don't, I, won't, I will not say a kind of, not everybody, but some whom they kind of separated me. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, let's say when I, 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 I go to a certain group for the refugees, I, I start to feel a kind of isolated. So, mm -hmm. I, so I, I saw myself, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I'm here, I'm, I'm happy, but it's, it's an opportunity here to, to say specifically this point of mine. Thank you. Yeah, I think if we give importance, um, if we value people, and we should value their culture too. And I think it's important, you know, otherwise um, there's really not any meaning to live, you know, with uh, like in different like countries or different, you know, to deal with different people. But I don't know, I think it's really very important. And I was so um, happy that when I was in um, Michigan, there were some people of, you know, I mean, they were my, my American friend, but they were kind of celebrating my you know, either religious, you know, uh, celebrations like Christmas or, you know, or like things like that. So I think it's very important. And if, I mean, when you see that a person who, you know, you are dealing with is also trying to understand your culture, you, mm -hmm. and after that you can become like more open to those people. And what I think what really brings like those cultural conversations, I mean, at the end, you see that well, that person, even though you had a lot of prejudges, I mean, has a lot of common things because we all are human being and we live in this world. So we value family, we value, we like food, right? Yeah. So I think it's very important. So, yeah. Can I talk about myself? <laughs> I sorry, excuse me. Okay, go right ahead. I feel if uh, I, I, I back again to my certain. People. I mean, I'm talking about the refugees who came. They came with me because they are kind of still under the uh, cultural shock, maybe. But by time, I my my message is that by time, let your children, maybe not you, but let your children adapt themselves to this culture and let them f be free, really free, not just to enjoy the benefit of freedom in different. And then when it comes to a specific point, you say, all right, let them be free in everything but not about this so please i i wish those parents or grandparents whom they have now these kids and babies let them for the future be open to to any discussion be, let them be anything like in any religion in any not just to enjoy the rest of the freedoms and thank mm -hmm. you again mm -hmm. well, i think she's talked about the, um, the festival that we have here at the at the institute uh, one of the things i like to do uh, is with my family i belong to a huge family when they come visit me and they like to come visit, spend some time during spring break or during the vacation time, I bring them here, I bring them to the festival, mm -hmm. I take them to LBJ Ranch, I take them to different places in Texas that are different for them. You know, and this exposes them to other ways of living. Now, I've never mm -hmm. gone to a Muslim church, I've never right. gone to yeah. you know something like that, but we had that here, we had the, the exhibit here, yes. and we had the speakers come to speak to us so yeah. you know so we got to know you know sure. this, yeah. this way so but i think it's us starting with our with our families our groups and then one of the things we do here is we serve as volunteers to tour children you know that come that want to see and hear mm -hmm. about the different cultures that established texas so um i think it's doing our part a little bit but it right. goes a long way. The yeah. group is that at home. Yeah. yeah. First, yeah. 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 That's yes. where you have to make yes. the children aware mm -hmm. because, you know, if, if we don't continue what we know now and it just drops, it fades away, and then there's more questions on, well, who's that group? Well, who's that group? I've been to places or big major cities where one group lives here, one group, they don't Mm -hmm. ever go down the street and cross and mm -hmm. we're not like that in Texas oh, in we're totally Antonio? different <laughs> or in San Antonio everybody says hi everybody's <laughs> hugging everybody and we just all get to know each other and you got to just work with the children so that uh, they will know the proper way and know about all these different religions and foods and cultures so that's why they're our future mm -hmm. yes. exactly and it's very important because I was listening to the conversations here and the way I would 
communicate this is at home, first of all. Mm -hmm. Telling my, my own children that we're here, yes, with a different color skin, yes, but we talk, we dress differently, but mm -hmm. we need to be, be a community together. So then in actuality, I'm very blessed to work at an elementary school and this gentleman here to my left said, let children just live, learn, and love. Mm -hmm. Because when they come into those doors, they don't know about the color of your skin. They just take you as who you are. Yes. And they give you the love. And I nurture those students. Yeah, that's good. I, I, teach these students to become who they are and who they will become one day. Yeah. That changed them. And not yeah. change That's them. what it takes. That's what it takes. I think, yeah, I mean, you're right. We should definitely pass this conversation starting at our home, you know. We should tell our kids that we should respect to everyone. That's actually, um, so, oh, okay. <laughs> One of my daughters, she actually, uh, she is um, third grade now. But, you know, I was like kind of trying to talk about her, like, you know, I'm trying to tell our religion and things like that. But she really, she all the time gets so curious about what the peoples believe. I mean, she is just eight years old, but she is so mm -hmm. curious. And I'm saying, okay, you can go and discuss. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell them, I mean, I always tell her that, okay, if they say something different than what I'm saying, you should be okay. Do, do not feel bad. I mean, this is, you know, what the people are thinking so you should be respectful so I'm trying to really teach her like you know kind of to be respectful to everybody like every belief or whatever I think it really starts at home yes. so it's yeah. important yeah. yeah I want our children to have the opportunity to be educated so that they can learn skills so that they can uh, support themselves mm -hmm. support their families and also not only have that kind of education, but also have the, the values from home that guide them once they leave home, because they, they will. Mm -hmm. Then they have those mm -hmm. values that have come from the parents and from the family and from the grandparents, you know, that makes them who they are, you know, because that's who I am today. Yeah. You know, I am yeah. my grandmother's, my grandfather's. <laughs> exactly. You know, yeah, yeah. That, that's who I am, yeah. you know. but. It's been changed, it's evolved through all the different experiences that I've had. Mm -hmm. And of course my faith is, is uh, most important. And I think yeah. this, is, this has to be critical for our kids. You know, not just to get educated, not just to make a good living, but also to have a faith based yes. experience. Yeah. And grandparents play such an Absolutely. important role. You know, they're, we're very influential mm -hmm. without even realizing how much. Mm -hmm. And I like to see the children get off the iPads and you know at my house at the dinner table no phones if it rings they will call back they used to on the rotary phones years ago they call back so they will call back and don't worry about it you know but to get off those phones and get more personal if, if there's someone at school the kids talk to that little person in your room and get to know who they are get to know what they're like so and so many of them now uh, it's wonderful modern technology, but they're getting so cut off. And so as a grandmother, I just figured it's my job. Parents are very busy and all that, so it's my job to say, hey, put that down over here. Let's look at a book. Let's read. Let's do I would say to children just exactly what these two young, beautiful women said, <laughs> that we have to talk to our parents because parents gave us experience. We learned from them. We also learned from teachers when we were growing up. Mm -hmm. However, we need to have time to read because I do see that it is very vital for children to pick up a book mm -hmm. and begin reading. I graduated from UTSA in 2009, I was blessed. I was born and raised in Edgewood ISD. And um, 
<clears throat> very passionate because I was one of so many in my family that wouldn't have been able to make it. And I was blessed because That's I great. did. Beautiful. But the only thing that I do would like to see more of is for children to know about the different, you know, heritages that mm -hmm. we have in life mm -hmm. because they do not know of them. They're too busy involved with electronics mm -hmm. and it's a shame that they can't just have a peaceful sit down peaceful talk and discover who are you sometimes uh, and i don't mean to interrupt because you've got a valid point but sometimes for them to know about their own culture they don't even know their own culture sometimes exactly. on what are the specific foods or exactly the language and, and or that stuff is like what that. we need to to teach them mm -hmm. because as a community you know they're being lost mm -hmm. you know because they're too busy doing other things and you know not calling grandma <laughs> you know yeah. what they'll call grandma when it's time to do the family tree oh yeah, yeah, that's you know, right you're right they, yeah. they mm -hmm. want to know family okay, tree. Who's grandpa right, 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 right. You know, <laughs> then, then you get called you know because they want to know that they've not been curious before but now right. they have to know for the assignment they get to a point they yes do. they will, mm -hmm, they will. Mm -hmm. I, my hope is that uh, the, the parents, the grandparents, the grandmothers give more time to the kids because sometimes as adults we are the ones who are busy so that's why the kids go for their parents sometimes. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I, I would love that to see that the parents, the grand, the fathers, the mother give from their time, from their time more for their children. So because I don't know, I mean I, I feel that many kids they they need their parents, but still those parents are so busy. And I would like to see the whole cultures give more time to the kids. I think, uh, yeah, I mean, the children in the future, I really expect them to be more critical thinker. I don't really want them to, I don't know, accept anything what is being told to them. They should really question, mm -hmm. and they should try to understand them. You know, like making some questioning, and you know interpreting yes. in their own brain so hopefully it's gonna make our I don't know whole world much beautiful because I think the well I mean the future becomes much better if we have people if we have those young kids who got education but it's not just only like pure education like ed education with wisdom I yes. think it's very important yes. and they should be critical thinking exactly yeah. yeah love your elders love education and most importantly love god because without faith without family without the learning you know that is unity and the spice of life is the community that different heritage heritages come together uh, i'm going to tell Especially my kids that I mean like everyone whoever like belongs to whatever culture is I think they should know how to cook their so, you know, some dishes from their culture and this is really my concern I am really I don't know considered by my kids so they're gonna cook some Turkish food in the future but who knows you know right so I would want them to um, follow their dreams I would want them to not try to be what someone else is but who is that individual and how can I live out who I am? Regardless of whether it's now or a hundred years from now. Yeah. And I would like to see for them to go back. Oh, if I had grandchildren 50 years from now, come back, look and see what Grandma Krauss did for different events and activities. Look to your future, but look what you came from, what past, where your roots were. And don't forget about those people. We made a lot of beautiful advances along the way, I think, about since my grandparents. But learn and move and keep it all together in a little shell right in your heart. Yeah, grandmothers teach your <laughs> children and grandchildren how to cook good. <laughs> what I want them to know about us is that, that we very much uh, thought about our past 
and plan for our future, and that it's thoughtful and that it's purposeful. And as, as you hear me say a lot, a city by design. It's design means purpose. That design means that you've, you're really taking many things into account. And so here we have a city that is rich in history, it's rich in culture, it's rich in diversity, and that, I think, is the city of the future. We already call ourselves the city of tomorrow in that this is what the United States is destined to look like. And, uh, you know, my hope is that in the future we say, you know, this is, this is truly, as I stated earlier today, cities cannot nurture what they do not honor. And so that is exactly what we learned tonight. Um, I really believe that this city is on a pathway to something really great and um, you know, the, the great history that we have is, is a lesson to all of us about the great future we can have as well. So I love it. <laughs> yeah, thank you.